Today we continue our discussion of state machines with a second lecture. And what we're going to do in this lecture is come up with a state machine solution to a, a practical and non-trivial problem of controlling turn signals in a car. So let's suppose these are the, represent the lights on the back of a car. So there are two lights on the left. And uh, two lights over on the right. This is what you'd see on the, uh, the back of the car. And let's call these lights Y3, Y2, Y1, and Y0. Those are four outputs. And of course, if, if one of the Y values is one, then the light turns on, and if it's zero, it turns off. And then we have two input buttons here, A1 and A0. And here's how we want this system to operate. If A1, A0 is equal to 1, 0, right, meaning A1 is 1 and A0 is 0, then we want to implement a left turn sequence that would look like this. Let's Present our, our lights here at three different times. Time goes on. So we start off with both of the lights off. And, and this would be, by the way, these would be uh, Y3 and Y2 over here on the left. So they're both off, uh, both, both off. And then we turn on Y2, and then we turn on both Y2 and Y3. So, and then we go back and repeat that sequence. So there's nothing on, then this one, and then this, these two. And this kind of creates a simple uh, kind of arrow pattern pointing to the left. And you'll see this, many cars will have many more than two lights in this pattern, but we're just keeping it simple here. Okay, um, if A1, A0 is equal to 0, 1, then we want to do a right turn sequence with the lights. And this will involve lights Y1 and Y0, and it goes like this. Similar pattern, but pointing to the right. Again, so as time goes on. They're both off, then this light is on, and then those two are on. And again, this kind of creates an arrow going to the right, and this, this is Y1 and Y0. And then that repeats as long as A1, A0 is 0, 1, and it just goes in that sequence off this light and then those two. So it looks like an arrow kind of pointing to the right. Okay, so those are two states. If both are one, then we do a hazard light sequence, which just looks like this. Very simple. All four of the lights link on and off together. So they're all off, then they're all on. And this is through through time, and then that repeats. So the lights just blink on and off. Uh, and finally, if A1, A0, A1, A0 is 0, 0, all the lights are off. And that's just your normal driving condition. Okay, so that's what we want to implement. So we want to make a 
state machine that does this. Now, we've got to figure out what our states are, and we've got to come up with state assignments to assign the outputs of flip-flops, the sequences of zeros and ones of those flip-flops, to the different states that we identify, right? and then come up with the, the transition diagram and then the transition table and the logic functions in the circuit. Okay, so here's here are the here are the states that we can identify. Uh, six states, and I'm going to make this a little smaller so it's a little easier to see. Um, okay, so there's one state. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and here are the lighting combinations. The first one has no lights, and the second one has that light on. And again, let's remember these are Y3, Y2, Y1, and Y0. Uh, then the third one has both of these lights on. And then we've got the one light here. And then both of those left lights on. And then all four of the lights on. These are the states we need. Obviously, these these three first three states would give you the right hand turn signal. The this first state, and then these two would give you the left hand, and then the last and the first would give you the hazard blinking. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six states. Uh, two to the two is equal to the four is not enough, so two flip flops won't work. 2 to the 3 is equal to 8. So we're going to need three flip-flops. And we're going to have two states that are we don't use. All right, so now let's just start. So we need three three bits, three Q values. And we can sign them arbitrarily. Uh, let's, let's do it this way. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, um, 0, 1, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, and zero, one, zero. Okay, now a, a little bit of trial and error went into choosing these these states here. Um, th this is not simply counting zero, one, two. This because if this was two, this would be zero, one, zero, and we did two down here, right? And so. There was a little bit of experience that went in to choosing these states. So how do you gain that experience? By trying different choices of states and see, seeing how it works out. Now there's some practical guidelines for state selection. And these are number one, Use all zero outputs for whatever the default would be. So the default in our case would be all the lights off. Okay. And number two, maximize number. of transitions with only uh, one bit changing. Okay, so let's see, like if we go through the right hand turn sequence, we would go from this, this state to that state to that state. So let's see, the way I set it up here, only one bit would change and going from here to here. And going from there to there, only one bit would change. And then we'd go back and start over. Two bits would change there, but 
So through this sequence, here, here, and here, only one bit changes each time. If we had made this 0, 1, 0, um, then two bits would change as, as we went from 0, 0, 1 to 0, 1, 0. Okay, so that was one rationale there. And how about when we go for left hand, we go from this, this state, the 0 state, to this, to this. And so we go all zeros, and then one, just one, zero, zero. So that's a change of one bit, and then one, one, zero. Again, a change of one bit. So that follows this logic number two. And then we go back. Now in that transition back, we change two bits. Okay, because so we can't always have only one bit changing. We do the best we can. And then for the uh, hazard lights, we go from this first state to the last state, zero, zero, zero to zero, one, zero, and that changes only one bit. Okay, so that was kind of the logic in coming up with these state assignments. Now let's make a uh, state table. So remember, this is a form of a um, truth table. So here we'll have Q2, Q1, Q0. And then the values y3, y2, y1, and y0. And these would be the corresponding rows in for a K map or just for a truth table. So to kind of simplify things, we're not going to put rows where uh, all the y's are off. So the so the zero zero zero, which would be the the row zero of the truth table, we won't put that. And they're only the rows that have one or more of the y values equal to one. So we would have row one, which would be here, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. And for that row, let's see, y1 is one. And I won't put zeros for the other places too, just to save on writing. And also kind of highlights a little more where the one values are. And then we have row two of the truth table, which is zero, one zero that's this last case and all of them are on for that all the y values then we have row three which is zero one one and that's this right here that the right two are on in that case then row four which is one zero zero that's this case where we have just the y2 is on. So we don't have uh, row 5, which would be 101. We don't use that state here, right? There's no 101, so we don't put that down. And then row 6 we have, which is 110. Okay, of course, this is the binary representation of the number 6. Okay, so one for 110, the, the left two lights are on. All right, now we could have taken these, these states, the rows uh, that, that do not correspond to any of these states we've identified, and we could have put, for those, we could have put uh, don't cares in for the different y values, and maybe that would allow us to minimize the function a little more. However, um, if by any chance the system ended up in one of those states, uh, you might end up with unpredictable results. So, so for example, when you power up, uh, you could use flip-flops with clear signals and force the system into the 000, zero, zero state. Um, or a safer approach would just be to have a situation where if we are at any of the other rows of the truth table that we haven't, of the really of the state table we haven't shown here, that we force the system to transition to the uh, all zero states. So by default, everything transitions back to that state if it's not defined otherwise in this, uh, this state di uh, table here. So that's the, the approach we've taken. So let's uh, form k-maps to figure out these logic functions.
And we'll have up here, this will be the Q2 and Q1 values. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And then over here will be the Q0 value, 0, and 1. And here are the rows from the truth table rows, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And so this will be the Y3 function. So Y3 is 1 for rows 2, and six, so that's two and six. Okay, that's a nice simple function. All right, that block right there, we can see what is that? Well, that is when Q1 is equal to one and Q0 is equal to zero. So Y3 is equal to Q1 and not Q0. Um, let's go and do y0 because it turns out to be relatively simple also. And for y0, let's see, we've got rows 2 and 3. So 2 and 3, that's here and here. And that's another simple logic function. That's when Q2 is 0 and Q1 is 1. So this and this is uh, the Y0 logic function. So Y0 is equal to Q2 is 0. So that's not Q2. And Q1 is 1. So and Q1. All right, the other two functions, y1 and y2, uh, they have three ones, so they're going to be a little more complicated. So let's uh, do that right here. And I'm going to need to move it down a little bit. So this is going to be uh, y1. So for y1, what rows do we have? We have 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so that's 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so this is going to require two two-cell blocks, that, say, and this. So what is the y1 function? Let's see this vertical block. Well, it's the same as we had up here. It's it's Q, uh, not Q2 and Q1. Or this block, well, that's when Q0 is 1. And up here, let's see the zeros, that's Q2 is 0. So that's not Q2 and Q0. So that is our Y1, not Q2 and Q1, or not Q2 and Q1. Zero. And then finally, over here, we will do the uh, y2 logic function. And for y2, we've got uh, rows 2, 4, and 6. So let's see. 2, 4, and 6. So that's these three here. So in that case, we could block these two together and then combine those two. Now notice that, that red circle there, that's the same as Y3. So Y2 is the same as Y3, which is Q1 and not Q0, or this blue block, and let's see, that's got over here, that's got Q0 is 0. And then Q2, remember this is Q2 and Q1 and Q0. Um, Q2 is 1 and Q0 is 0. So Q2 and not Q0. Now, one of the things we see, again, and pointed out, is that this Y0 logic function, which is, consists of these two cells, 
is part of the y1 logic function, right? This that there is the same expression there. So it would be kind of silly to have an AND gate to implement this and then do it again over there. Why not just make use of the fact that we already have calculated y0? So just let that just be y0. Calculate y0 and then use it to calculate y1. Likewise, over here for y2, uh, we've got this red 1 by 2 block there, and that's the same as y3. So this first term is just y3. So go ahead and just calculate y3 and then make use of it in the calculation of y2. So with that, we'll write our results this way. y3 is q1 and not q0. y2 up here, uh, right there, is y3 uh, or q2 and not q0. y1 is y0 or not q2 and q0 and y0 is not to q2 not q2 and q1 all right so we want to put all that let's put all that into a a little chip that's going to have some input Q values and then the output Y value. So we're going to have, uh, say, Q2, Q2 prime, not Q2, Q1, Q0, and not Q0 as our inputs. That's a Q1 right there. And then our outputs are going to be one, two, three, four, y three, y two, y one, and y zero. That's going to be the output logic block. And notice the output logic here <clears throat> depends only on the state, only on the Q values. It doesn't depend on the A inputs. We haven't even touched on those yet. Okay, so this is a more machine that where the where the output depends only on the state. All right, what does that circuit look like? Uh, well, we, we could do something. Well, we could put the AND, and gates here. We're going to have four, four AND gates. Um, and the first one, we're going to get our Y3, which is Q1 and not Q0. And, and then what we could we do up here, we could do these inputs. Q2, not Q2, Q1, Q0, and not Q0. And so for the Y3, we want Q1 and not Q0. Okay, and that's going to be our Y3. For Y2, we're going to have Y3 or... And then the next AND gate is going to be Q2 and not Q0. We have the same not Q0 and Q2. Okay. And then we want to OR that with Y3. Not a very good OR gate there. Sorry. Maybe a little better. So this is going to be Y2. So Y2 is y3 or this and q2 and not q0 let's see as we move down uh y1 well let's do y0 first y0 is not q2 and q1 so not q2 and q1 that's y0 and then y1 is y0 or so it's going to be another one of these or things here we're going to have an or gate y0 or not q2 and q0 okay so we're going to have uh, q0 here 
and not too Q is this line right there. So it would look something uh, like uh, that. Let's see, Y0 is not Q2 and Q1. And then Y1 is Y0 or not Q2 and Q0. Okay, and so this would be Y1. Okay, so this circuit is what goes into this little block there. Now let's look at the uh, state diagram. So let's draw it this way. Uh, this will be the, let's see, let's, let me get a little more space. This is the state 0, 1, 0 which is the one that has all the lights on. And uh, then here will be the state where they're all off. That's zero, zero, zero. And then down here, I'm going to put the state 0, 0, 1, and that's where only this, oops, only this light is on. Below that, I put the state 0, 1, 1. where both of the right lights are on. Then over here on the left, we'll put the state one zero zero, where first of these left lights is on. And below that, The state one one zero with both of the left lights are on. Okay, so there are the six states. And now what do the let's see, maybe we put little boxes around them. They're clearly distinguished from each other. And we want to look at the transitions. Okay, and this is in terms of the A1 and A0 values. Okay, so remember what happens if we have, um, these are equal to, both equal to one, that's the hazard sequence. Okay, so in that case, we should start with all zeros. We should then transition to all on, all ones, if, and this will represent the, the two bits here, A1 and A0, that would be that transition. And if we're, all the lights are on and both of the A values are one, then we transition back to the zero, 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 0 state. Right, so this is the hazard sequence. All off, off, all on, all off, all on, etc. And that's when... A1 and A0 are both 1. The right turn sequence, that's when A1, A0 is equal to 0, 1. Okay, so if we're in the all off state and our A values are 0, 1, we go to the state where the first of the right lights is on. And then if we continue in our right turn sequence, where the A values are 0, 1. Then we go to the state where they're all on. And then, maybe I should have a little more space here. 
Uh, let's do it this way. Uh, no. This would be, if we stay in that sequence, then when we get both of these lights on, we go back to where they're all cleared, and then we go through this sequence. We go around this loop here when the A values are 0, 1. Okay, uh, the left turn sequence is A1, A0 equals 1, 0. And let's see what happens in that case. Well, then if we start here at the 0, 0, 0 state where all lights are off, we should go down here when the A values are 1, 0. Turn on one of the left lights, and then we continue. If the A values are still 1, 0, we continue in the left turn sequence, and then turn on both the lights, and then go back to them all being off. And if, if those values continue, then we just go around that loop. All off, one on, both on, all off, etc. Now here's a subtle point. What if we are in this turn sequence, let's say the, the right turn sequence here, and say we get down here to one, one of the lights is on, and suddenly we change the, the button states, the A states. What should we do? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the initial state, and we'll write this this way. This will be if the value is anything other than 0, 1. This means any, any other states of the A values, of the, of the four possible states, anything other than 0, 1, then we go back to the initial state, all zeros. And then from there, we can figure out what sequence to do. So this keeps us from, for example, if we were in the right turn sequence going through this, and here suddenly we switch the button so that we were, were in, wanted to be in the left turn sequence, where we would suddenly jump from here over to the left turn sequence or do something like that. We always go back to all the lights off and then start a new sequence. So likewise over here, if at any point um, we have anything other than one zero, which would keep us in the left turn sequence, then we're going to transition back to all zeros and then from there figure out where to go. And over here, if we're in the hazard sequence, and we get anything other than 1, 1, then we want to transition back to all zeros. Now what about, so, so we have six states, and with three bits, we can have eight states. So there are, there are two states that aren't defined. And those are 1, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 1. So what happens if we were to get into those states? Now, in principle, we would never get into those states. If we started off, say, at all zeros, none of these uh, conditions here could, could get us into any, either of these states. But just to be careful, we're going to say if we're in, in those states and we have, don't care about the A values, it doesn't matter what the A values are, we shouldn't be in these states. Transition to the all zero states. That's gonna be our safety. Just in case a glitch happens and the Q values get us into one of these non-defined, un unused states, we're gonna just automatically go back to the all zero states. Now let's build a state table. Now let's see, how many rows would this have? Well, we would have, right, we've got three state variables, the outputs of three flip-flops, and then we've got the two inputs. So five variables. So we would have two to the fifth is equal to 32 rows in our, in our table. And that gets a little bit, a little messy. However, um, there's actually a compact way we can represent things. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to break things up like this. We'll put here Q2, Q1, and uh, Q0 values.
And then over here, we'll put A values. 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. We don't show the A, A1, A0 equal to 0, 0, because we know in, in that case, we should always transition back to, to all zeros. So we're, that's going to be kind of just implicit. So these will be our, here, will be our A1, A0 values. And we're not going to show any states that transition back to all zeros, too. So that really reduces the amount of possibilities here. So we're going to have 0, 0, 0. That's the all zero state. From there, we can transition to three different states, this state, that state, and that state. OK, so let's write that. Um, if a1, a0 is 0, 1, and we're in this state, will we go to the state 0, 0, 1? OK, so we're going to write that over here. 0, 0, 1. If we're in the triple zero state and the a1, a0 is 1, 0, we go to the state 1, 0, 0. That's over here. We'll write that here as a 1, 0, 0. If, and if we're in the all triple zero state and we have 1, 1, we go to the state 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 0. Okay. Let's see. What other states transition to something other than the all zero state? Well, if we're in the uh, 0, 0, 1 state, we can transition to the 0, 1, 1 state. And that occurs if a1, a0 is 0, 1. So we could be in the 0, 1, I'm sorry, 0, 0, 1 state right here. And we can transition if the a values are 0, 1 to the 0, 1, 1. And if we have any other value, of the a values, right? That's that's what these this represents. Then we go back to the zero all zero states. We don't aren't going to show those transitions. Those are most of the transitions on this diagram would be back to the all zero states. So by default, anything that's not the transitions that aren't shown explicitly here would be a transition back to the all zeros. Uh, or we could be in this state. Right? This is the only other state. The all zeros, zero, zero, 001 and 100, zero, zero, the only states that transition to anything other than the all zero state, right? Like this 010 zero, zero state only transitions back to the all zeros. And, and these two states, 011 one, one and 110, one, one, transition back to all zeros. Okay, so we could have the 100 zero, zero state, and it will transition to the 110 one, state when the A values are 10. So this will be, well, here we'll say 1. 1, 0. Okay, and those values then, those will represent Q2 star, Q1 star, Q0 star. The next, those will be the input to the, the D inputs to the flip-flops, and they represent the next state, the Q star states. Okay, so kind of using this shorthand notation, we actually get a fairly compact representation of our circuit. Uh, of our system, really. And then we'll come to the circuit later. We'll figure out the logic functions for this. Now let's figure out the logic functions for the uh, Q2 star, Q1 star, and Q0 star. These are going to be the D inputs, right? These will be end up being the D2, D1, and D0 inputs to the flip-flops. Right now, remember when you write down a logic function, you're, you're, it, that is a formula that tells you when that thing, that expression is equal to one, and otherwise it's zero, right? That's why we've been able to get away with this very sparse rendering uh, for our state table, because we aren't explicitly showing any of the transitions that go to zero, because in those cases, right, the next, the Q2 star, Q1 star, Q0 star would be all zeros which would mean that the logic function for Q2 star or Q1 star and Q0 star would, would be zero. So it wouldn't be something where they were transitioning to a value of one. So we're only showing when at least one of these transitions to a value of one. So let's see. We could uh, compactly use this notation. 2Q star would be equal to... Um, We'll write it this way, triple zero. That means the current state is all the Qs are zero. 
and then slash, these are the values of the A1 and the A0. So if, if it's 1, 0, well then notice the Q2 star, which is the first of these three bits here, is going to be equal to a 1. Okay, so that's just the shorthand for these three Q values and these two A values give you a Q2 star, which is equal to 1. There's only one other case where there's Q2 star is 1, and that's, so we say or, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, slash, and the corresponding A1 and A0 values are 1, 0 again. Q1 star. Uh, so so in how many cases are there where the, the Q1 star value is 1? That's the middle bit. There's 1, 2, 3. Okay, so let's write those down. Let's start up here. That's where all the Qs are 0, and then we have A1, A0. A They're both equal to 1, so that would be triple zero slash one one or let's go to the next one uh down here zero zero one for the q values and zero one for the a values okay that'll cause q1 star to be one that's this bit right here and then find this one here so then or one zero zero those are the q values and the a values are one zero And then Q0 star, that's the last bit here. There's there's one and there's one. So there's only two possibilities. The first is triple zero. And then the A1, A0 values are zero, one. And then the other possibility is zero, zero, one for the Q values, slash the A values are zero, one. Okay. So that's a compact representation of the logic functions for Q0 star up through Q2 star. So what, is, what would this actually be in more familiar notation? Well, this represents Q2 is 0, Q1 is 0, Q0 is 0. So that means that would be Q2 prime and Q1 prime and Q0 prime, meaning not Q2 and not Q1 and not Q0. And then this would be a1 is equal to 1 and A0 is equal to 0. So that would be and A1 and not A0. Okay, so that's that's just a compact notation for this expression there. And then we'd have over or here we'd have Q2 is 1. So that would be Q2 and then the other Qs are 0. So Q2 and not Q1 and not Q0. And then the A1 and A0 are uh, are 1, 0. So that would be then, again, and A1 and not A0. So that would be the logic function for Q2. Now, this is a five-variable logic function. We could try to use, use some sort of augmented K-map or something, but there are few enough terms here. Uh, there's really just these two terms. It's just the sum of two terms. But we could just use algebra. We can note that there are some common factors. Both of these terms have a1 and not a0, and they have not q0, and they have not q1. Notice that. So we can factor that out. What does it leave? In the first case, it's not q2. In the second case, it's q2, and not q1, and not q0, and a1, and not a0. And of course, Q2 or not Q2, there's a that's a one variable identity, that's equal to 1. So this just reduces down to this expression. Not Q1 and not Q0 and A1 and not A0. That is your Q2 star function. Uh, let's do the next uh, one that only has two terms. That's Q0 star. Okay, so now do you see with this uh, compact notation, we can immediately do this, this calculation, finding the common terms and then factoring out, because you see they both have zero for the first bit and they both have zero for the second bit. And then it's the third bit where you get zero or one. So we could write this as zero, zero, don't care. It could be zero or it could be one. 
and then slash, and they both have zero, 01. Okay. So what is it? What does the first zero represent? It represents not Q2. The next zero represents not Q1. We don't care about Q0 because it can be either zero or one. And then the A values are, well, not A1 and A0. That's Q0 star. Now, how about the uh, more complicated of the three, the Q1 star? Okay, we look up here. All right, we'll see. What are the common, let's, let's underline the common terms. They all have Q1 is equal to zero. And that's the only uh, factor in common, okay? So let's uh, factor out then. Q1 is equal to zero, so that would be not Q1. And what's left? So this first one would have zero, zero, that's not Q2 and not Q0. And then one, one, that means A, A1 and A0. Or over here, this would be not Q2 and then Q0 would be 1, and Q0, and then 0, 1 for the A value, so that would be not A1 and A0. Or finally over here, first one, that's Q2, and then the last 0, that's not Q0, and then A1, A0 is 1, 0, so that's A1 and not A0. Now with that factoring out the Q, not Q1, we're left with an expression that has only four variables. So we could use a four variable k-map to reduce this. Um, however, there are only three terms here. So it's actually simpler to do it, in my opinion, just by using algebra. So what we're gonna do is look at these first two terms there. Now what do they have in common? They have an A0 and a not Q2. So that'll be, not Q2 and A0, and then what's left here, the first guy's got a Q, uh, not Q0 and A1, and the second one has a Q0 and not A1. Now, what is that? So that, that means this is, this is true if one, but not both of the variables is one, right? If A1 is one and Q0 is zero, then this term would be correct, it would be one. Or if Q0 was one and A1 was zero, this, this term would be one, right? That is the exclusive or. So this is not Q2 and A0 and the exclusive or, of Q0 and A1, because we have XOR gates, we can make use of that. Okay, and then we would just have the, the final term here. So here's what we're gonna have. Q1 star is going to be uh, now equal to not Q2, we've got this common factor of not Q1, we'll include that here, not Q2 and not Q1 and A0 and then this exclusive or between Q0 and A1. And then this second factor over here, adding in the thing we factored out, not Q1 will become Q2 and not Q1 and not Q0 and A1 and not A0.
Okay, and so that's our, our third logic function. Let's rewrite those now and see if there's any, any other things we can do to optimize our implementation of this. So Q2 star is not Q1 and not Q0 and A1 and not A0. Q1 star we just had here is not Q2 and not Q1 and A0 and Q0 exclusive or A1 or Q2 and not Q1 and not Q0 and A1 and A0 not A0 and Q0 star we found was not Q2 and not Q1 and not A1 and A0. Let's see, so when we look at that, um, well, the second term over here, let's compare that to the Q2 star and the Q0 star. Uh, let's see. Uh, actually, I'm seeing a lot of things in common, right? Here's a not Q1, not Q0, not Q1, not Q0, A1, and not A0. So, in fact, this is just Q2 and... Q2 star, All right? Because this, these four terms, these four factors right there are just those four there. So if we have already calculated Q2 star, then the second term for Q1 star is just Q2 and Q2 star. And then let's look at the, the first term here and look at then also the Q0. Are there anything, is there anything in common? Uh, let's see, these both have a, a Q2, not Q2 and a not Q1. Okay, um, and an A0. So they got three, three factors in common. So with that, let's rewrite these again. Q2 star, which is, is the D2, the input to the, uh, one of the, the most significant bit of the uh, flip-flop, number two. Um, that's going to be not Q1 and not Q0 and A1 and not A0. And then Q1 star, which is D1, we're going to write as not Q2 and not Q1 and A0 and, right, that's these, these three factors right there. Notice those are all in common with these three factors, one, two, three, down at Q. Q0 star, so that and the exclusive OR between Q0 and A1. And then OR, this guy we've already worked out, is Q2 and Q2 star. And then Q0 star, which is D0, is the same factor. And what's left is just the not A1. Okay. And so what we can do there is we can calculate this factor just once and then use it in two of these logic functions. Right? Okay, so that leads to the following circuit implementation. So here is the resulting circuit. So we're going to put this in a little logical block here. It's going to have inputs Q2, Q2 Pro not Q2, not Q1, Q0, not Q0, A1 and A0. And then the A1 and the A0 will also uh, invert that here so we have access to all the A1 and not A1, A0 and not A0 values. Okay, so here we've got D2. D2 we showed was not Q1 and not Q0 and A1 and not A0. So we have a four input AND gate and we just put in these four values, not A0, a1, Q0, not Q0, and 
finally not Q1, okay? So that's our D2, our Q2 star next state. Now, and then for D0, uh, we showed that that was um, not Q2 and not Q1 and A0 and not A1. So we first calculate here the factor that's in common to D0 and D1, not Q2, not Q1, and A0. Okay, so here's A0, not Q1, not Q2. All right, and then we just add in another factor of not A1. So we take the output of this AND gate, put it into a two input AND gate, and the other input is not A1, and we get our D0. Now for the most complicated of the three, the D1, we make use of the fact that D1 was an OR between two different uh, product functions. The first we could write as Q2, and D2, this D2 function. So we just pull out this D2 function and then put 2Q as our other input over there. And that's one of the inputs to the OR. And the other one we showed was this common factor with the D0, this in brackets here, not Q2 and not Q1 and A0. And, so that's this AND gate here. So the common factor here and this exclusive OR between Q0 and A1. A1 and Q0, okay? And then that's the D1 function. Okay, so now we have our output logic and our excitation logic. And now we can go into logic circuit and simulate our system and see if it works as advertised. Here we are in logic circuit, and here is our output logic. Right, so we worked this out. So the first logic block we worked out, they give us our Y3 to Y0 in terms of our Q values, the state, current state, including the dot Qs and so on. Okay, and this is gonna fit in a little box. It's gonna go into our final circuit. And then we just worked out the excitation, oops, excitation logic. So that was this circuit right here that gave us our D2, D1, and D0. So there's that. That's going to go also go into a little little box, little looks looks like a little logical circuit, and then here's going to be our turn signal circuit. Here is our G of A and Q, which is our excitation function. We've got the the inputs Q two uh, Q two prime, which I, I label as N two and Q1 prime, which I label as N1, logic circuit only allows you two, two characters. So um, Q0, uh, not Q0, which I label as N0, A1 and A0. Here's the output D2, D1, and D0. We put those into the D inputs of the flip-flops. Of course, they're all got a common clock too. And then here's the FQ, the output function that is gonna give us our output variables. Now, so here to get the Q and the not Qs, right? Remember that T flip-flops give you both the Q and the not Q values, and you just feed those back into the appropriate inputs here. And then here's your uh, output logic, which only depends on the on the Qs. And also he needs the not, not Q zero here. Okay, so let's see if this works. Here, we're gonna take that, right? And, and this is all gonna sh end up then, because it has what three inputs the a1 and the a0 and the clock input and four outputs the y three two one and zero so here you go there's that little circuit with the three inputs and the four outputs i put it in this fashion so that the the outputs will drive these leds and they'll look like kind of have the same orientation as they would uh, on the turn as the turn signals on the back of a car okay so let's run this we're going at a uh, rate of 4 hertz here. And so this clock is running at 4 hertz. So if I press A1, then that should do the left turn sequence. There we go. And just repeatedly does it. So that's, we're doing a left turn. And anytime I shut that off, notice it goes right back to all zeros. 
The right turn sequence, that would be A1 is 0 and A0 is 1. Here we get the right turn sequence. And anytime I put, turn that off, we go right back to all zeros. And both on should give me the hazard lights. All right, so if I put this down to a slower speed so we can see this, there's our hazard lights. Now if I turn those off, it goes back to all zeros and then, then goes into the new sequence, which would be a left turn. We're in hazard lights, goes back to all zeros and then does the right turn sequence. Okay, so it seems to work as advertised. Now in the notes, we also explore the idea of using four flip-flops. Uh, because in that case, we can assign the output of each flip-flop to one of the lights. So it makes the output logic trivial. Y0 is just Q0, Y1 is Q1, Y2 is Q2, Y3 is Q3. Okay, so... You have, you know, now you have two to the four is equal to 16 possible states. And again, we only need uh, six. So, but the, on the other hand, now the, the excitation logic, we can work out what, what that is. And can we go through the details? Um, and there's a slight, if you actually do the count of the number of transistors that would be involved between the two cases, there's a slight reduction for this approach. Um, whether that would be worth it or not might, might depend on other, other, other ideas here. So this would be the turn signal circuit. Now it's just got this one block that is just the excitation logic, which is more, a little more complicated in this case, but you have the trivial output logic, and we can test that. And indeed, um, we'll find that it works just like the other, the other solution. So this just emphasizes that there is no one solution. Right? There could be different approaches. They might give you different advantages and disadvantages. And you know, with some experience, then you start to understand which one might be best for your particular case. Now you might want to, you know, your, your goal might be to minimize the number of transistors and, and that might be one criterion. Or there might be a reason why having uh, this implementation with this trivial output logic is preferable. Okay, in that case, then this circuit would, you know, would be the one you'd probably want. 